Okay, this lesson is on linear functions. Um, it's actually covering two different sections, so most of this is a review. Um, I want to start off by talking about slope. So um, hopefully you remember from Algebra 1 that slope is the change in your y direction over the change in your x direction for a line. So if we had two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, I would use this formula here. Notice that this represents right here represents the change in your y direction that cor uh, vertical segment right here and this part x2 minus x1 represents the change in your uh, horizontal direction so that horizontal line here represents the change in the x okay so really what's important here is to make sure that um, it doesn't matter which point you pick first but make sure that you have y2 stacked up on top of x2 make sure that you have y1 stacked up on top of x1 so in other words if I were to do this very first problem here, um, if I pick 9 and then subtract negative 7 from it, I must pick negative 4 on the bottom and subtract away 3. So this is going to assure that I have the correct slope. Now I actually like to teach this a little bit differently when I teach Algebra 1 because there's a way to make sure that you never write this the wrong way. What you're going to do is stack the points. Okay, so you're going to take one point here, let's use this one here and I'm going to put the y on top, the x underneath. And then I'm going to take my other point, I'm going to put the y on top, the x underneath, and then I just subtract in between. This again, just make sure that you'll never get the problem wrong as long as you stack your points. So the, the numerator here becomes negative 16, the denominator here is 7, so my slope is negative 16 sevenths. Okay, now in B, uh, this example is on here because I want to show you something that happens when you stack your points here. So let's pick the first point, 0, put the negative 2 underneath, and then let's pick this point and put 5 on top, negative 2 underneath, subtract. In the numerator, I'm going to get negative 5. In the denominator here, though, I get 0. When you have 0 um, underneath in, a, in a, a fraction here, you can't divide by 0. This is undefined. If you stick this in your calculator, it's going to give you an error message. It's undefined. And we'll talk more about what an undefined slope looks like. And in example C, it's slightly different. So let's select this point, put it on top, stack negative 2 underneath. Put 6 on top and then negative 4, subtract in between. I get 0 on top here, and then um, on the bottom I get a positive 2. Now, anytime you have a 0 in the numerator, this has 0 slope. So this is actually 0 as opposed to here where it's undefined. So there's a very big difference here. Make sure you understand that. When the numerator is 0, it's just 0 slope. When the denominator is 0, we cannot divide by 0. That's why it becomes undefined. So that's where we get into the different types of slope. Um, your first slope is a positive slope. So a positive slope, you can imagine like a skier. So I'm a little skier guy. I always go um, left to right when you read a graph. So if I look left to right, this guy is going uphill, which is why we have a positive slope. Now, if I draw the line like this, remember you read graphs left to right, your skier is up here. Now he's going downhill which is why this has a negative slope. And then um, if we have a skier and he goes down a line like this, okay, our skier, well, ah, he crashes and dies, right? So I don't really know how to rhyme this, but it's undefined because you die. I don't know, the word die appears in there. Not a great uh, memory reference, but it'll help, I guess. And then the last one, a horizontal line here, this has a slope of zero, because again, if you imagine your skier here, he's got zero speed going across this hill. So this is a slope of zero. So the big idea here um, is to understand and recognize a positive slope, a negative slope, something that has an undefined slope, so this is a vertical line, and a horizontal line will have a slope of zero. So the next thing that we're going to discuss are x and y intercepts. I'm going to start off here with an x intercept. So here I have the graph of a line, um, and the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so it's where this line crosses the x-axis. So clearly you can see it crosses at this point here. I'm just going to write the coordinate of that point. It looks like negative 4, 0. Now, even if I move this point around, or this line around, let's say I move it over to here. Now I have an x-intercept at 3, 0. If I move it again, let's say I move it to, I don't know, over here. Now that coordinate is negative 6, 0. 
So just take a look at these coordinates. It doesn't matter where I move that line. You're going to notice that at every point, your y inter or sorry, your y uh, coordinate happens to be zero, right? So that brings us over to here. Whenever you see an x-intercept, the coordinate is always going to be some number, right? We have some number here, like negative four, negative six, or three. But then you always see a zero in place of the y. Okay, so it's always going to be a number comma zero. That's the big idea here. Okay, so now we're talking about y-intercepts, and the y-intercept is just where the graph is going to cross the y-axis. So in this case here, if you look at this point, um, this is crossing at 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4. Right? Even if I move this line around, let's say I move it down here, now this graph is crossing at 0, negative 3. So the idea here is that you're seeing the same coordinate for the x value. Um, you're always seeing a 0 here, so it's the opposite of when we saw the x-intercept. So right here, um, a y-intercept's coordinate is always going to be 0 and then a number. So 0, comma a number. These are your big ideas for your x-intercept versus your y-intercept. Okay, so I have the definition here written for the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and then a little um, thing about what the point's going to look like, the general form of that coordinate. Um, so that's going to help us when we're doing um, algebra here. Uh, if we want to find, in this case, this is written here in standard form. This line is written in standard form. If we want to find the x and y-intercepts, we're going to use this idea here. So the x-intercept, we have already a known value. If we're finding an x-intercept, we know that the y is always equal to 0. So that's all we do is we substitute y equals 0 in for this y, and we solve for x. So that leaves me with, if I plug in the 0 here, this term is going to co completely cancel out, right? 6 times 0 is 0. So I, I'm left with 3x equaling negative 12, and I get negative 4. Now you want to be careful and make sure you write this as negative 4, 0. Okay, because a lot of students will, when they find the y-intercept, combine the two. Um, so I'm going to do it correctly and then show you kind of what the mistake is. So for a y-intercept, we know that the coordinate is always supposed to be 0, comma, a number. So this time, I'm going to plug x equals 0 in for here, and I have 3 times 0 minus 6y equaling negative 12. This is, of course, going to cancel, and I end up with y equals 2. So I end up with the points... Two distinct points, negative 4, 0, and 0, 2. This is your x-intercept, this is your y-intercept. Most often, mistake that I see is when kids put them to together, so they'll just write the coordinate as negative 4, 2. This is a single point as opposed to two distinct x and y-intercepts. Okay, so for graphing lines, I'm actually going to direct you, if you need help still on graphing this in slope-intercept form, then um, look under the uh, algebra review and go to the graphing tutorial. This will help you out through graphing this. Um, there's also a little part about graphing using intercepts, which is what we just worked on, was finding the x and the y intercepts over there. So I'm just going to focus on graphing these next two lines, y equals 6 and x equals negative 4. So for y equals 6, if I were to graph every single point on this um, coordinate plane where y equals 6, I'd count up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'd make a point. Well, y equals 6 here too, and so does it here, and here, and here, and so on. And I could do that forever. So the point y equals, or the line y equals 6 is actually going to look like this. So it's a horizontal line. And you're always going to go to where the y value is equal to whatever number it is, and then you're going to just draw a horizontal line through it. Now, conversely here, um, for an x equals a number, um, this time it's going to be a vertical line. And again, if we went to x equals negative 4 and we made a bunch of points, because it's equal to negative 4 here, it's also, whoops equal to negative 4 here and here and here and here, and we connected all of those points, we'd form a vertical line. So for this, all you do is you go to where, whatever the x equals, so let's say it's x equals 3, you go to 3 on the x-axis, make your point, and then draw a vertical line through it. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is the end of lesson for sections 3.1 and 3.2.